In this first video, looking at elections in the United Kingdom, what we're going to do is talk about the um, the main election um, system that we're going to be uh, exploring, and that is the election system of first past the post, sometimes just abbreviated to this. Now we're going to talk about how it works, where it's used, and then talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages. There's a lot of political um, discussion that goes around when it comes to whether or not there ought to be a reform of first past the post. And we'll find out in later lessons that there were definitely referendums in the past that have proposed reforms to the general elections system of uh, electing um, members of parliament. However, none of them have been successful, and so that's why we have to look at the advantages and disadvantages of the system. So, first past the post is the electoral system that we use when we do our general elections. The last general election, if you do not remember, was 2019, okay? Uh, it feels like a long time ago um, due to this pandemic, of course. Now, first past the post is the electoral system which operates as what we call a plurality system. Now, there are different types of um, electoral systems um, and different kinds of um, things that we can talk about. So, for example, there is a difference between a majority system, a majority system versus a plurality system. Now, what we mean by this is with a majority system, if you want to win um, a particular election in a particular constituency, you have to get 50% or more. That's what a majority system would, uh, would tell you. However, with a plurality system, all you need is more than second place. Okay, That doesn't mean you have to get more than 50%. You could get 30% of the votes and the person who comes second can get 28% of the votes and then you have a few more people that get um, smaller and smaller percentages and you would still win. All you need is a plurality of the votes, not a majority. That's what first past the post um, gives to you. And that has a number of consequences that we will look at later on. So, like we've just said, uh, it doesn't mean that you need a majority to win. All you need is the most votes, okay? And this could be one vote more. And you could have one vote more. And that could even be as low as 20% or even 10%. And it, assuming that there is, like, a lot of different candidates in, in the particular district. And so when there is the case where you have more than two candidates on the ballot, which is the majority of the cases, and where those um, multiple candidates, more than two candidates, are particularly strong. So, for example, if we have a district that has a conservative, oopsie daisy, we have a conservative uh, person on the ballot, we have a Labour, and then maybe we have Lib Dem, and then maybe we could have, um, if we're living in Scotland, we could have SNP as well, uh, then we would suggest that there is a lot of people on this ballot and they would all get a um, relatively significant percentage of the vote. And so therefore it would be very, very difficult, if not impossible, for any one, um, one uh, uh, person who is running for Parliament to actually get a majority. This is why a plurality system uh, works. So you might have you know, a certain amount um, per person. And then you will also obviously have um, smaller and smaller parties. You may have um, uh, UKIP uh, a few years ago, uh, the Brexit Party. Um, you could also have the Green Party, etc., etc., etc. Down the list we go. So this simply, that's simply how this system works. It's, it's a very simple system. That's one of the reasons and one of the advantages that we um, can draw when it comes to first past the post. First past the post is a very simple system. You go to the ballot box, you put an X in the preferred candidate that you want to vote for, you put that um, into, um, you know, you give that, you hand that back, you put it into the box, and then the person who has the most X's in those, uh, in, next to their name, wins that constituency. It's as simple as that. OK, so let's think about the advantages um, in more detail. So, yeah, the first one is simple and it's easy to understand. That's something that's very important when we're talking about participation, participation. OK, because there are a number of arguments that suggest that if we were to have a more complicated electoral system, if we were to have alternative voting or, or supplementary vote, for example, the things we'll talk about in later lessons, then that could actually impact the amount of participation and the amount of turnout when it comes to elections because people might not be particularly comfortable going to a ballot box and um, putting numbers next to names or putting preferred candidates and putting like uh, second preferences and all these kind of things. And so that can cause a participation issue. And so the fact that first past the post is ridiculously simple and ridiculously easy to understand might mean that it is very easy 
for people to go and they know who they're electing, they know who they're voting for, they know what um, putting an X in uh, next to somebody's name actually does and how it's counted and how it's calculated and they can understand the system easier and that's and that's a very good and important part of politics it has to be something that um, is easy to understand so that people can engage with it um, in, a, in a much more fre you know user-friendly way as you were okay and by being easy to understand it incentivate it does also in when it comes to participation it also incentivizes people to take an interest in voting and the electoral process this ties into the issue of participation if we have a very simple and easy system to um, to uh, you know to to use if we have a simple and easy system then people take a greater interest in voting because they don't feel like it's too difficult to understand and therefore they will um, lead to it could lead to a greater turnout it is also a system whereby each constituency is represented by one MP which is very um, which is very useful so when you go to vote at the ballot box you do not actually vote for the Prime Minister, unless you're in the Prime Minister's constituency, you vote for your local MP, and that local MP will be uh, a member of a, uh, member of a political party, unless they're running as an independent. And it gives you a certain amount of connection with the political representative. Because you're voting for your local MP, you're not just voting for some um, vague, um, ethereal understanding of a political party uh, in the future. You're talking about lo voting for a local MP, somebody who you might know personally or you might have met. So it gives a certain amount of connection with the, um, at a local level with um, the election process. However, on the other hand, there are a lot of disadvantages to first past the post. The first one being that first past the post leads to a great number of wasted votes. Now, what do we mean by this? Because a candidate only needs to win more than second place, and they only need more than second place to win the election, that means that you can have more um, votes than you need. So, for example, if we have a candidate who has, so we have candidate A versus candidate B, okay? In a perfect system, Okay, in a perfect system with no wasted votes, candidate A might win um, 10,001 votes, whereas candidate B only wins 10,000 um, 10, votes. And in this system, candidate A wins without any wasted votes. They win by one vote and they, get the, uh, they become the MP for that constituency. However, in reality, okay, in reality, we will have candidate A and candidate B and you might have candidate B winning 1,000 votes, for example. And then you might have candidate A winning 10,000 votes. Okay. Now, that's a 9,000 vote swing. Okay. Which means there is up to 9,000 votes that candidate A didn't need. All candidate A needed in this scenario was 1,001. They only needed one more vote than the second one. Uh, however, they've got way more than they need. So all of those other votes are just wasted votes that they don't need. And this is um, one of the big problems with this system. Okay, You can lead to a number of wasted votes. So any vote above one vote uh, above is um, actually considered a wasted vote. And this encourages a system of tactical voting within elections, whereby voters, the electorate, will vote for a candidate they may not believe in. They might not believe politically or ideologically with this candidate, but they know that they have a better chance of winning. So let's think about this in a, another example. Let's say we have three candidates, A, B, and C. Okay. Now, candidate A, okay, wins 10,000 10, votes. Um, and then we have the other two candidates. Maybe you are somebody who really believes in candidate C, okay? But you know that candidate C might only win 500 votes, okay? So that's quite problematic. You, you think, oh, well, if I try and vote for candidate C, there's no chance of candidate C ever going to win, so there's no point in me even voting for them. If I do that, then what's the point? And then you might go to candidate B, and candidate B might have 9,000 votes, OK, now candidate B is very close and you might think, you know what, I don't necessarily believe in anything that candidate B says or does, but I really do not like candidate A. So I'm actually going to take my vote and I'm going to give my vote to candidate B just to try and stop candidate A from winning. Now, this um, is 
more of a disadvantage than an advantage because it means that you have uh, people voting for things that they don't believe in effectively and they're only voting on a tactical basis to try and um, to try and you know um, push the odds in their favor as much as possible so whereas candidate C might have um, won more votes than they um, could have done um, candidate B got more votes because people believed that candidate B had a better chance of winning now there is obviously uh, upsides and downsides to tactical voting on the upside, you have a better chance of um, getting the person who you don't want to uh, win in or out of office, for example, by voting for the, the, the better candidate of the two. On the other hand, people who don't tactically vote, if you were, if the whole country didn't tactically vote and voted for their um, whoever they wanted, okay, it would mean that the smaller parties wouldn't win still. They wouldn't get as many votes. Uh, so they wouldn't get anywhere near the enough votes to win, but they might get more votes than um, expected. And a result of that is the people who run these political parties will take notice of the popularity of these parties and they will start to adopt policies uh, in doing so. So it's always important, in my opinion, it's always important to try and um, to try and not tactically vote, depending on the circumstances. Now, when it comes to um, looking at the real world statistics, systems with first past the posts tend to have a lower turnout. There tends to be a lower turnout, and if you go back to our democracy and participation lessons, you'll notice that the turnout is um, quite a lot lower in the United Kingdom than it is in other countries, for example. However, there has been slight rises in that, and one of the main reasons for that is the uh, political um, uh, participation rates that have uh, come about as a result of things such as Brexit and um, the kind of people engaging in politics as a result of things like the Brexit referendum. Now, first past the post has a major disadvantage as well in the fact that it um, favours parties that have support in terms of geography. Now, this is something that's very important. OK, so if we have a political um, part, if we have two constituencies over here, so let's say we have some constituencies. We'll have more than two, actually. We'll have some constituencies over here. Well, let's have four. We'll have four constituencies. Constituency A, B, C and D. Now, if you are a party within these four constituencies, you can get a lot of votes. Let's say you get 5,000, let's say you get uh, uh, 20,000 votes altogether. Now, that's a lot of votes for a political party. However, if you got 20,000 votes all in constituency A, if all 20,000 votes came from constituency A, then you're in a, with a good shot of winning that constituency and putting an MP in Parliament for that constituency. However, if you're somebody, if you run a political party that's more spread out geographically, and maybe you have five five thousand in each, okay, that's a lot of votes still. And if you look at the overall voting um, statistics for um, an election, you'll think, wow, they've got a lot of votes. However, because they're all spread out across geography, it means that it's unlikely that they'd win any of these seats, but they would just do OK in these seats. So it effectively favours the parties that have quite a lot of concentration of votes. If you've got about four or five constituencies where a lot of people are voting for you, then they're the, they're the constituencies where you will get um, a greater chance of winning those constituencies for, for your member of parliament. However, if you have um, uh, a lot of votes but spread across all 650 constituencies, then it's less likely that you're going to be able to win any seat at all. And the good example of that is the case of the election in 2015 with the uh, independent UK Independence Party, UKIP. They won a total of 3.9 million votes. They won 3.9 million votes in that election, which is a huge amount. I believe that was um, fourth. Uh, they came fourth in terms of the total votes for each party. But they didn't win a single seat in Parliament because these votes were spread out across all 650 constituencies. And there was no real critical mass of concentration of votes in any one constituency for them to ever get anywhere near winning uh, a single seat. Now, the next one we could talk about is one that is actually quite recent in terms of uh, criticism. One of the main advantages that have always been put forward when it comes to um, first past the post is that it guarantees a strong majority. People say, well, there are these problems when it comes to, um, you know, uh, wasted votes and people are tactically voting. Um, it supports people with uh, supports parties, sorry, with strong ge geographical ties to a particular area. But it at least guarantees that we have a strong majority. However, 
While this has been the case um, historically, in recent years, this has not been the case. In the last four general elections we've had, two of them have resulted in a hung parliament in, in no single majority. And this these resulted in a coalition in 2010, and we ended up with a minority government in 2017. So we can talk about the fact that in the last four general elections, it's only had a 50% success rate in terms of getting a strong majority. However, you could talk about it producing a strong majority in 2019, in the 2019 election. So these are all just some of the things that we can think about when it comes to the disadvantages of first past the post. And when we're talking about um, comparing the advantages and disadvantages of first past the post, it is important that we bring in these um, key in pieces of information. This is why uh, later on we'll do some case study lessons looking at each and every election from, we'll just say from 1997 onwards, and, and looking at a number of pieces of, uh, of, of statistics that we can really analyse.